Welcome to our Piano Masterclass series, video number seven. I'm so excited because today we have two wonderful performers. So first of all, we're gonna hear from Talis, who's been playing the piano for two years and eight months. And Talis is going to be playing the second movement of Clementi's Sonatina, Opus 36, number one. And I'm so excited to hear you play, Talis, so let's hear it. All right, so first of all, tell us amazing work. I loved your playing. I loved your performance of this piece. Thank you so much for submitting another video. It was really cool to see your progress and to hear you play another piece. So I want to commend you on your alignment and your positioning at the piano. I think that it has improved drastically since the last video that I saw. So that's awesome. In particular, I was impressed with your back alignment, the fact that you were sitting up so nice and tall, and the fact that you seemed to be a lot more flexible at the piano. I love that you chose a tempo that was so comfortable for you and you were so steady with that tempo. It can be difficult sometimes to commit to a slower tempo but ultimately if you can play it really well at a slower tempo I always say that we want to pick a tempo where we can play musically and where we can play accurately and we never want to sacrifice the musicality or the accuracy for a faster tempo so bravo with that I love that I could see you using your arm weight to produce some dynamics and I think overall throughout the piece you had some really exciting larger dynamic changes and that was really fun to hear I do wonder if you could spend a little more time looking at each phrase individually to see if you can have more dynamic contrast within every single phrase. So what I heard was kind of like a zoomed out version of dynamics where we had like a section that was piano, a section that was a little louder, a section that was a little quieter. But I wonder if we can find some more movement within every single phrase. A great way to do that would be to look at each phrase and ask yourself where is the most exciting part of this phrase and how does that fit in with the context of the piece. So in the first phrase, for example, if we say that the first phrase is the first four measures, I would maybe say that the trill is the most exciting part so we could work to build towards that trill and then maybe decrescendo at the end of that phrase and that would sound something like this or something like that and obviously the dynamics that you choose for each phrase would be your own based on your own artistic interpretation. But I want you to explore just more range of dynamics within every single phrase. Now the other thing that I want you to think about in this piece is keeping your wrist a little bit more flexible and loose, especially with this up down motion. I saw a lot of flexibility in your arms, especially in the way that you moved from your shoulders and your elbows, but I wanna see some more of this down up motion. It's so important with phrasing and especially in pieces from the classical period 
period where we really want to get that graceful sound. If we can keep our wrist nice and loose, we can really end our phrases with a lot of grace. So I want you to watch my wrists as I play. And I'm not going to exaggerate the wrist movement, but I just want you to see what I'm talking about. at the little ends of slurs, I really have this down up motion that helps to bring a lot of grace to those. And so I want you to experiment with that. And a really great exercise that you can do is you can pick an interval like a fifth or a sixth, and you can practice just dropping into the keys and going up and down and up and down and then gracefully lifting from the keys and then up and down. And honestly, the notes don't even matter. It just matters that you're getting really used to this motion. You can imagine that there's a rubber band that's kind of picking your wrist up and then you can let the rubber band go. And then you can pick your wrist up and it's just totally flexible like that. I explained that in a little more detail in one of my piano technique videos and I'll link that in the description below. Thank you so much for sending in a video tell us. That was amazing. I loved hearing you play. I look forward to hearing more in the future. All right, this next person is Daniel and Daniel's gonna be playing for Elise for us. Let's hear it.
right, nicely done, Daniel. I love your performance. I loved your video. That was very cool. Good job. It's really clear that you know what's going on in this piece. And I love that you played the whole piece because oftentimes when we hear for release, we hear the first really famous section, but people don't always play the B and the C section. So really good job. Bravo with your playing. I think that your drama was excellent. And I think that you did a really good job of understanding the piece as a whole and making it feel like a complete work. Now, I'm not sure if it was a setting on your keyboard or if it was pedal, but I, th I assume it's pedal. And so I'm going to talk about it as though it's pedal. And one thing that I think you could consider for this piece is using a little bit less pedal, especially in the B and the C section where things are contrasting and especially at the ends of phrases. So we really want to let this music breathe and we want to be able to feel these phrases. When we think about phrasing in music, it's almost like the way that we speak, at least in the English language, a phrase is kind of like a sentence or a thought. And we need space in between our sentences or space in between those phrases just a little bit to digest what just happened and also to look towards what is coming. We also need variation in those phrases. And so if we give ourselves a break with the pedaling and we allow that space, the music breathes and it can feel a little more natural. So let me show you what I mean. Instead of holding the pedal all the way through, you could consider doing something like this. No pedal, pedal, pedal. different editions of this. There's thousands of editions of Fur Elise and some of them will have pedaling suggestions. So I would maybe suggest consulting one of those. If it's an artistic choice that you made to hold the pedal all the way through, that is your prerogative. But if you're struggling with pedal and if that's something that you struggle with, then I would suggest watching my video about how to pedal like a pro and I'll link that in the description below. Now, one other thing I wanted to hear is just a little bit quieter left hand and especially the thumb. This is something that so many people struggle with because our thumb is like the strongest clunkiest finger. And so it can be really challenging to keep it quiet. And in our left hand, in this A section, when we have those open arpeggios, we want to make sure that we're not landing on that thumb and bouncing off of it and accidentally accenting it. So I saw a little bit of that in the video where it was, we're really getting that, that thumb A really loud. And instead, I wonder if you could play it a little quieter and a little bit more even. And maybe use some wrist flexibility to guide your wrist up towards your thumb so it's supported so we don't have to bounce off of it. And that would sound like this. It really lets that melody sing out above that left hand. Now my last comment for you is about the B section and the C section. And I think that you could bring just a little more contrast to these sections. And part of that will come from looking at the pedal, like I mentioned before, but part of it can come from also really paying attention to the articulation and getting clear on where the staccatos are, where the accents are, where the slurs are ending and seeing if you can be a little more particular about those articulations and not pedal through them so that we have a little bit more contrast. The mood of for Elise is quite different in the A section, the B section and the C section. So you could also ask yourself, you know, if this were the soundtrack to a movie, what would be happening during those sections? And how can you make it sound like that when you play the piece? Beautiful playing. I really enjoyed listening to you. I hope that I get to hear more pieces by you soon. Thanks so much for submitting. And those of you watching, please consider submitting a video. This has been so much fun and I've been loving hearing the videos. I have a pretty good backlog of videos to listen to, but I'm taking submissions on a rolling basis. So I'm going to be making these videos every week and you can submit pieces at any point. And I'd love to know what you think about these videos and how they're helpful to you, if they're helpful to you or if they're not helpful to you. So please let me know in the comments what you think of them and if you're finding them useful. And if you are, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so that other people can find it as well. Don't forget to check out my other masterclass videos, which you can do right here.